Amen. So thankful you all are here today. We've been praying for you. Amen. I believe God's going to touch you and lift you up. Uh, and everybody say amen. 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 want to keep, uh, we have a, a Sister Cynthia's uh, a son was married yesterday and they had a big day. So I want to keep Sister Cynthia, uh, Sister Mona in our prayers uh, uh, and this new journey for their son's life. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, just keep them covered in your prayers. Amen. A lot going on around here. Amen. And we're winding up before you know it. We'll be uh, uh, closing out this year, moving on to the uh, a new year. Uh, but between now and then, I believe God has a lot in store for us. Uh, we're so thankful to have Brother and Sister Poole with us today. Yeah. veteran missionaries, amen, who have served uh, the United Pentecostal Church International uh, in great measure, amen, and have done a great work uh, uh, in the mission field and even here uh, stateside, and they're prepared to go back uh, uh, across the ocean, amen, and we want to uh, uh, we want to be a blessing to them today, but we want to give them our hearts and our minds uh, as they come and minister the word of the Lord and their burden to us. Uh, uh, one more time, let's give them a warm welcome. God bless brother. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. And uh, smile at your neighbor, and then you may be seated. Amen. Praise God. And I really enjoyed that Sunday school lesson this morning on relationships. Amen. And uh, I was thinking how blessed I am to have a relationship with this church. Amen. And uh, the people in this church. Amen. You all some, some wonderful, wonderful folks. And uh, I appreciate your pastor allowing us to come and to be with you in service today. We've got quite a few things we want to do. We do want to give you a little presentation on what's going on in Africa and uh, what we'll be doing when we go over there this time and uh, all that. So we're going to go right into that first. And uh, amen. You know, dim the lights now. I apologize. Some of these slides are kind of dark, so it might be a little hard seeing. But they're not all that bad. So praise God. Amen. amen. Well, we are, as your pastor said, oh, let me say also this, happy Veterans Day to all you veterans. Amen. 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 Praise God. And uh, I get to be a veteran twice. I get to be a veteran missionary and a veteran from the United States military. Praise Amen. God. Amen. But we were veteran missionaries to Africa, but now we're going to the country of Lesotho. As you can tell on that bottom left-hand picture, if you can make it out, uh, there is uh, a much skinnier uh, much younger brother pool <laughs> amen hallelujah and uh, but we are going to Lesotho for the country of you to spread the gospel in the continent of Africa and there's a what do they call it when you get a larger meal supersized version right there on the bottom right there hallelujah but uh, we started off in 1991 as Amherst to Nigeria, which is Associate Missions. We spent a year there overseas teaching, evangelizing, printing, and doing bookkeeping for the Bible school, and did a lot of Bible school work uh, during our time, our first tour over in Nigeria. We spent five years on the AIM program, preaching and teaching and working with young men and women and the pastors and going to their churches and uh, we really had a great time as AIM workers working with the pastors there. There's some of the pastors from the country of Nigeria with some of the graduates. And of course, we love to go to villages. The villages were awesome because they were so receptive of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They just open up and let God have his way in their lives. Isn't that what it's all about? Amen. 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 And uh, of course, there's another picture of uh, the graduates there. I'm not sure why this presentation is going by so fast there. 
the cesspool just wants to get me over with. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, but we, one thing that we really enjoyed in Africa was their baptismal services. And then that's taken in front of the little pond there where we do a lot of the baptismal services. That's with Sister Garrison and my wife there. And as you can tell in the picture there, if you can make it out, well actually they do baptism with three or four people at a time. And there's some pastors baptizing at least three at a time there. And one thing we loved about the baptismal services was when they went to, down to the river or down to the uh, pond or wherever, I mean, they worship God. They sing songs. They lift up their hands. They clap. They praise God. You think it was in regular church services right. just for the baptismal. Amen. Because it's a great thing when someone could go down in the water and the name of Jesus Christ come up out of the water, a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Bible says old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. So we love doing baptismal services in there. Then we began... I uh, helped as part of the Africa Impact Team to build this equipment uh, for Crusade Ministries. That's a 40-foot trailer. We cut a 20-foot section out of the side of that trailer. It opened up, a platform came out, and we could go to any city or village in West Africa and preach the gospel. Amen. It consisted of three missionary families, and our focus was, again, on West Africa and uh, we had the outreach trailer that you see there. We also had four living quarters. And we needed five six-wheel drive trucks to pull out that equipment across West Africa. So you might be wondering why six-wheel drive trucks. Well, I'm kind of glad you asked. <laughs> because that's some of the roads. Hallelujah. And uh, what happens is during the rainy season, vehicles continue to travel on those roads. They splash all the mud out on the sides and it builds up and then when dry season comes that stuff hardens like a rock and so as you can see in that uh, picture right there we are kind of a little bit stuck there got the trailer on one side of the rut and the truck on the other <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway uh, what happens is then when it rains again that hard mud like clay it gets slick and uh, we've taken a few, or I've taken a few rides on the front of a winch cable, uh, skiing down the road trying to keep up from getting too muddy. But uh, if you don't have six-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, this is what you do. You push. Mm. And uh, so we're glad for She's for Christ and for what they do for the missionaries helping to provide vehicles. Anybody remember these two little girls? <laughs> That's one of my favorite pictures. Of course, that's Rebecca and Jennifer there. And uh, I used to tell people they were the first white baby girls to bounce across West Africa. Wow. Wow. Amen. And they're doing fine. Uh, both of them graduated from college this year. Uh, Rebecca is married to a wonderful husband. And uh, I'm now a grandfather. And if you don't believe me, I do have pictures. <laughs> Amen. And then Jennifer, she's not married yet, but she might as well as have be engaged there. They're just working on a date and all that at this time. She's living in Louisiana. And of course, Rebecca and her husband are living in Berea, Kentucky. So we'll get to spend some holiday time with our kids this year. Praise God. Then we went to the country of Cameroon. And as you could tell by that little grasshopper on my daughter's hand, that the bugs are big in Cameroon. One reason for that, and one reason the bugs are so big, is because they have plenty to eat. Man, I should have had y'all turn around. Looks like a better picture back there. Hallelujah. I was wondering what the pastor and the harp were looking at. <laughs> Hallelujah. But uh, there we are on the way to a village church. And once again, like I said, the villages are wonderful to preach in because some of them have never heard the name of Jesus before. And when they come and they hear how God loves them and died for them, they just fall in love with their Creator and they worship God. And when they begin to worship God, God fills them with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is, this is a, one of the churches in Cameroon. I had the opportunity to pastor for a few months because they had lost their pastor. And uh, we began to have church down there in that, that uh, coal camp. And uh, we had a beautiful time with them. And enjoyed pastoring that small church in uh, Cameroon. And of course, while we were in Cameroon, the College of Theology there needed a principal. 
So we accepted the challenge. Uh, we began to develop policies for the Bible school. We printed textbooks for the students. And both my wife and I taught daily in the Bible school there in Cameroon. And Bible schools are important because we train them and then they can train their own people. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. But now we are Lesotho bound. Lesotho is approximately 11,720 square miles. It's slightly smaller than the state of Maryland. And it is the only country in the world that is completely surrounded by one other country. And that other country that surrounds it is the country of South Africa. Amen. Amen. Some of the statistics from Lesotho is there's approximately 2.2 million people that live there. Their life expectancy is 52 years. They speak four languages. Sasutu, English, and thank God for Z English. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Zulu and Hauser. Uh, their religions are Christian and indigenous beliefs. So unlike West Africa, which had a high population, about 93 to 97% Muslim, uh, they don't have that problem in Lesotho. So we thank God for that. Their government is a constitutional monarchy. In other words, they still have a king. The full name of the country is the Kingdom of Lesotho. But they do have a constitution to help govern the people. And uh, so, unlike uh, England that has a king or a queen, uh, the king there really does have power. Praise God. Uh, some of their industries, they have food, textiles, beverages, handcrafts, construction, tourism, and found out they also have mines. So, praise God. Hallelujah. Just some of the landscape of Lesotho. This is actually the city of Masuru. And uh, you can tell it is a little bit mountainous there. Uh, you can't see there, but you can tell by looking at the vehicles. They're a little bit nicer than we had in West Africa. And they actually have roads to drive on. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, they look like nice roads, but the only problem is they drive on the wrong side. So that might take a little getting used to. But uh, it is a mountainous kingdom. There's a lot of mountains. And in fact, the elevation in Lesotho starts at about 4,500 feet. And it goes up from there. So they raise a lot of sheep and everything for their textile industry. Uh, because sheep can fare well in cold weather. And they get snow in Lesotho. And this is just in case you didn't think zebras lived in snow. You were wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. They can live in snow quite well and camouflage quite well. Hallelujah. Some of the lifestyle and the dress, I hate that you can't see these very well. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's some of the way they dress. Uh, I told someone one time, I'm going to have to get me a horse. I'm going to get me a sheath for Christ sign. I'm going to get me a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when I first started showing this, I told people I was going to put a big sign on the back of the horse, you know, and I was thinking of hind quarters back there putting SFC and get a picture. And someone told me I better watch out which end of the horse I put SFC, lest I might not get any support. <laughs> Hallelujah. But now this guy right here, now this guy is really styling. And what happened? And I know it just looks like he has a blanket around him, but that's exactly what's going on here. Back in the late 1800s, someone gave the king of Lesotho a blanket, and he didn't exactly know what it was for, so he wrapped it around himself, pinned it over his shoulder, and it became the instant style for Lesotho. And uh, they still do that today, wear the blanket around him and pin it over against their shoulder. It's just some of the village scenes here, and there are not just this capital city like you saw earlier. There are a lot of villages with the thatch roofs and the mud huts and all that, but the gospel was meant to preach to everybody. Amen. Not just the cities and the towns, but the villages also. So we plan to bring them the gospel of Jesus Christ. A little bit about the history. The church was started there by... Brother Mac Carpenter, who was a missionary in South Africa and decided to reach into the land of Lesotho. And uh, he was the first missionary to go there and start to work. After that, the Klein family joined him in uh, 1999. And uh, they were there for quite a while and have resigned 
uh, from being a missionary in the country of Lesotho and they are now going to the Leeward Islands. So they're still missionaries, but at this time there is no missionary in the country of Lesotho. And that's one reason why we're going there. Uh, the church started in Lesotho, began with five people, grew to five churches. Now there's 11 churches and preaching points and approximately 11,600 souls in the church wow. there. there. At one time, and this is a picture of it, there were actually four entire congregations baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're not just reaching out to the indigenous work, we're reaching out to everybody. Amen. Amen. Everybody needs to know that they can be set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Nope, that one went by fast. Hallelujah. But if and we'll we'll show we'll set up this slide presentation in the back. Maybe you can look at it, see some of these pictures after a little clearer. But if you can see that, you will notice that the church in Lesotho is made up of a lot of young people. There's a reason for that. One reason is the, the life expectancy is only 52 years. One reason for that is one out of every four people in the country of Lesotho have the HIV virus. So the church in Lesotho, the young people that you see in these pictures, they're not the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today. Amen. And I would love to watch the young people praying for young people because there's just something about young people when they pray for young people and they get involved with church. They go, hey, listen, I serve a God that can heal HIV. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we serve a God that young people, when they begin to pray for young people, God moves in their life and God touches them and fills them with the Holy Ghost as a young age and they grow and they learn and then they become the pastors of the country and they go to the Bible schools and we train them and they go on to pastor other churches. Then when they get older, they come back to the Bible school. We'll use them as teachers in the Bible school and they'll teach the next generation coming up because our job is to work ourselves out of a job. Our job is to provide them with a Bible school, give them doctrine, evangelism, Christian living, teach them how to fast and pray. They have experience of living in dorms and leadership roles and preaching opportunities so that they become mature in Jesus Christ and then they teach their next generation and then that generation will teach the next generation and the students will grow and they'll learn and, and they can live in their culture better. They can speak their languages. They, they can do more in their own land, in their own nation than a white person can. So that's our goal. We want to go over there. At this time, the country of Lesotho does not have a formal Bible school. And Bible school is so important for the growth of a nation. Because if you can't train them, if you can't put the Word of God and keep them there and let them learn, amen, amen then the maturity level is, also, is going to be also small because they don't have the knowledge the Bible says my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with teaching people the Word of God. Amen. There's nothing wrong with having a Bible school. And a Bible school is needed at this time at the country, in the country of Lesotho. And so Lesotho just doesn't need the pools. Lesotho needs you also to partner with us in missions and to pray for Lesotho. Amen. Listen, your missionaries need your prayers. Your, the church in Lesotho needs your prayers. Because it'd be just like if your pastor left for years and not came back. What would he find when he came back to church? Lesotho needs her missionary. I said, well, I um, hope for a couple more amens. <laughs> Lesotho needs their missionary. And, and my wife and I, we are willing to go to the country of Lesotho. Pray. Amen. That God would help us to get there quickly. The old saying goes, some people go by giving, others give by going. Amen. I believe that. My wife and I, we give of our lives when we go into these countries. But when you give to missions, you go with us. That's why they call it partners in mission. And I believe that there will come a day when, when someone can walk up to you in the kingdom of heaven and say, you don't know who I am. 
but because you sent a missionary to my country. They taught a young man in a Bible school one day, and that young man came to a remote village way out in the back of Lesotho. That young man was my pastor. Amen. And I'm here today because you sent a missionary to train people in Lesotho. Hey, I believe that's how it works. Yes. Amen. When you give, I believe God gives you credit because we partner together in missions. You don't, I mean, not everybody's called to go there. You are called right here to your city. Amen. You're called to reach your neighbors. You're called to reach the... Unless God puts another calling in your life, this is where God has called you to be. Amen. Amen. Do for God what you can while you're here. Amen. But help us also to get there so we can do what God has called Amen. us to do. Partner together in missions. If you're a techie person, we, <laughs> you can text uh, AMP15 to 71777. And uh, you can give online there, but please get with your pastor. Let them know what you're doing uh, and uh, all that. We appreciate y'all letting us come and be here. Hallelujah. But the field is ripe and ready for harvest. He said, therefore, pray that the laborers yes. or that God would send forth laborers into the field. And so pray for the laborers in the kingdom of Lesotho and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. At this time, Sister Poole is coming. She has a little bit for you here. And uh, we'll just go ahead and have church. What do you say? Amen. Everybody say, God bless Sister Poole. God bless Sister Poole. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. It's great to be in God's house with family. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And God is so good. I was seeking Him, wanting to know, you know, what, what should I say today? And I was thankful to get a confirmation with the Sunday school class this morning. Sister Sari did an excellent job. Amen. Amen. But God, He knows. He's yes. got it all orchestrated. He does. And I'm so thankful that, you know, He's a great big God. He's mighty. He's awesome. But he cares about each one of us. Yes, Amen. Does. And so when I was seeking the Lord today, I was just thinking about, you know, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always. And so he's, he's told us that. But it's not just that he's there. We have to take advantage of that presence. Amen. Amen. We need to seek him. Acts 17, 27 says that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after Him and find Him, though He be not far from every one of us. And as Sister Sarah was talking about relationships this morning, the Lord had given to me that, you know, lots of times I have learned over the years, I've been walking with the Lord about 35 years, and sometimes I have to learn the lesson again. <laughs> but... When in our relationships, we need to make sure that we invite Him into that. Right. We need to ask Him for His help. Yes. When we've got a struggle, we've got a problem, we've got an issue with somebody. We need to ask Him, Lord, please help me with this. You've got to put your arm through His and say, Lord, please walk with me through this. Show me which way to go. What do I need to say? What should I be doing? Or, Lord, just take control of the situation because I've done everything I can and I'm not, it's not happening. Right. <laughs> right. Amen. And I've had that happen. <laughs> and every once in a while, because we're still human, we might have that happen again. Yeah. But if we can remember so quickly, if we can just remember, He's right there. Yeah. And we can invite Him into that. Oh. Amen. Amen. And He makes all the difference in the world. Yes, he Amen. Does. Yes, he does. I want to teach you an African chorus. So you need to stand for up. My husband need to talk, say, why you no tell them you're going to speak in some other kind of language. <laughs> but I like the, uh, the shock factor, I guess. <laughs> um, but in Africa, at least West Africa, they sing for two, three, four hours. Wow. They may only sing three or four chorus during that time. <laughs> We actually had one aimer that was working with us. He just said, let me, let me just count and see how many times. And he counts and he starts and he goes one, he goes two. He counts up to into...
200 times and he said, well, okay, they are still going, never mind. <laughs> Amen. But they will worship God. They will run the aisles. They will jump and dance and shout. Amen. And half the congregation will do that. The other half will be singing. Then when this half, you get tired, they begin to sing and the other ones will take their place. So it just goes and goes and goes and goes. Amen. Well, don't worry. We're not going to do that one today. <laughs> but we do want for worship God. Amen? Amen. 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 We had a wonderful worship service this morning. Amen. We want to just add one more song to that one. Amen. And it's a very simple chorus. It just says, I have a very big God, oh. He's always by my side. A very big God, oh. By my side. By my side. And if you know, know like for sing, then you can just do the movements. It's okay. We'll, uh, we will enjoy that one too. Amen. So, I have a very big God, oh, he's always by my side, a very big God, oh, by my side, by my side, I have a very big God, oh, he's always by my side, a very big God, oh, by my side, by my side, I have a very big God, oh, he's always by my side, a very big God, oh, by my side, by my side, I have a very big God, oh, he's always by my side. A very big God, oh, by my side, by my side, I have a very big God, oh, he's always by my side. A very big God, oh, by my side, by my side, I have a very big God, oh, he's always by my side. A very big God, oh, by my side, by my side, I have a very big God, oh, he's always by my side. A very big God, oh, by my side, by my side. Aren't you glad you have a great big God always by your side? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord another good hand clap of praise. Well, you may sit for down. <laughs> Let me just say that uh, that display back in the back there, that is, you can pick stuff up on there. Don't worry about it, you know. Uh, hopefully... I don't believe you'll break anything. We've had that stuff for a long time, so um, it's not broken yet. Amen. Amen. What? Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. She didn't want me to read her notes. She wants me to read my own. <laughs> but back there on that display, there are some business cards that uh, you're welcome to take. It has a... Um, a Facebook group on there, or what some person called that at a conference this year, they called it Two Facebook. <laughs> but if you so, if you're on Two Facebook there, uh, we do have a group there called Mission Lesotho Pool Family, and uh, you can join us there and follow us as we travel around the states to raise our money, and also as we go to the country of Lesotho, as long as we have good internet service there, we'll be posting pictures and letting everybody know what's going on with the church and how it progresses while we're there. And then also on the back of it, there is that Amp to Give number. Uh, if you would like to be able to give uh, without us having to be here, you could always, they'll put money right into our account so that we can use it over there for the ministry. We also have, I'm going to leave up here for your pastor, a, a PIM slip. Now, I will tell you this, if if you decide to take us on as a partner in mission, other than what the church is doing or whatever, please tell your pastor, get with him, pass it through him, and uh, do all that together with the church. Amen? Amen. 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 And also, to our, uh, our pleasure, uh, because we are right now on a short-term mission program, and so we were not allowed to raise money for the Bible school in the country of Lesotho. In fact, we were going to go to Lesotho, spend our first eight months to a year there trying to find a piece of property or buy a piece of property or do something, a place where we could build a Bible school. And then we were going to have to come back to the United States, raise the money to build the Bible school, then go back and build it again. Well, that's going to take years. 
And what happened was Brother Abernathy, who is the uh, area coordinator for the southern section of Africa, was able to get approved a Bible school um, project. Thank you. Bible school project uh, number for Global Mission so that we can start raising money for the Bible school. However, if you would notice and if you're, you'd are you like to put something towards the Bible school, once again, get with the pastor. Uh, it will have Brother Abernathy's name on it, his picture, everything. You will not get a plaque for this. Do not include my name on this. <laughs> because it's not my project. Amen. And so uh, they, don't, they don't want me reaching over to do stuff I'm not supposed to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. But many of you know, this is a good way for me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Anyway, it's all for a good cause. is to build a Bible school in the country of Lesotho that is well needed at this time. Amen. Are you all ready for the word of the Lord? Oh, yeah. All right, let us stand and go turn to the book of Mark chapter 15. And I'll be reading verses 24 to 39. Mark chapter 15. We'll read verses 24 to 39. Once again, let me, let me just say I'm so thankful that we get to be here on Veterans Day. Yeah. Amen. I uh, spent eight years out here at Fort Bragg, so this is kind of like my home, away from home, you could say, and uh, just, uh, just so neat to be here on, on, on Veterans Day, so yeah. that's pretty cool. And I'm also glad that my wife is with me this time. The last few times that I came, it was because I was trying to uh, fix that house in Fayetteville so I could put it for sale, and my wife was out taking care of my mom in Arizona who needed 24-hour care. And uh, seeing as how my mom has since passed away, that uh, left us free to go back to Africa, amen, as missionaries. So we do thank you for allowing us to come. And I'm, I'm thankful she's with me this time. Amen. 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 Yeah. That's right. She is a part of the ministry, and uh, she is always by my side. <laughs> Ew, amen. Uh, let me, where's Sister Harper? Oh. <laughs> she, on the bus, oh, you'll have to get her to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only picking. Uh, amen. I love doing bus ministry. And your pastor's wife, uh, someone was talking about the Dublins, and uh, man, Brother Cannon, it's been a long, but when, when I first met Brother and Sister Cannon and uh, uh, the girls were little girls. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, 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 they were, they were a little shorter than they were now. <laughs> Amen. I'll just tell you, their children are bigger than they were when I first met them. Amen. Amen. Especially that boy, good night. How'd you grow him so tall? <laughs> Miracle grow or something. <laughs> Praise God. Mark chapter 15, beginning in verse 24. We'll read through verse 39. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them that every man should take. Or what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him, and a superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, one on his right hand, the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads, and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildeth it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, all the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. 
Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with Him reviled Him, and when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabach sirnai, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come down to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. Pastor, if you pray for this. Dear Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for this day and our time together. We thank you for, for your word, Lord, which is such a blessing and encouragement to us, Lord. I pray you would continue to anoint your servant, Lord, and that every word that is spoken, Lord, would lift us up and strengthen us, Lord, and help us to be the people you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Shake your neighbor's hand and you may be seated. Or sit down first and then shake his hand. Hallelujah. Whichever works. Praise God. I'd like to take my text and preach from Mark chapter 15, verse 31. It says, Likewise also the chief priest mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others. Himself He cannot save. He saved others. Himself He cannot save. You see, there are many times in the Scripture that the religious leaders said things that were true. One time when the lame man was brought by his four friends to where Jesus was and they led him down through the roof in the midst of that group of people that was there. And Jesus looks at him and he says, Thy sins be forgiven thee. And the religious leaders stopped and said, uh, uh, You know, um, who can forgive sins but God alone? Right. That was a true statement. Amen. No one can forgive sins but God alone. So they were right. All they needed was a revelation of the mighty God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 15 verse 31 is also a true statement. He saved others himself. He cannot save. You see, Jesus' life, His death, burial, and resurrection was about saving Himself. Right. It was about saving others. Right. So I'd like to preach to you just for a few minutes on this message. He saved others. Now, theologically, we could debate such things as could Jesus have sinned? Could He have come down from the cross? Let me tell you something. Save your breath. The fact is, Jesus didn't sin. Amen. And He didn't save Himself from crucifixion. Right. That He could save others. Right. Let me remind you that Jesus was uh, Jesus was more than just a man. And I'm not saying He wasn't a man because without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sins. So I'm not saying that He wasn't a man. I'm saying that He was the Lamb of God. According to God's plan, slain from the foundation of the world. As Isaiah 53, 7 put it, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Let me tell you who Jesus is. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is He who was and is and is to come. He is the root and the offspring of David, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. But He's more than that. He's my hope. He's my Savior. He's my deliverer. He's my Righteousness, my refuge from the storm, my strength when I am weak. He is the author and the finisher of my faith. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God. Paul wrote in 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy, in other words, without any argument, you can't fight this one. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. The word great doesn't mean incomprehensible, as some would use it trying to discredit the oneness of God in Christ Jesus, saying, Oh, the mystery is so great that we cannot understand it. The word great actually comes from the Greek word migas, meaning exceedingly great, high, large, loud, mighty, or strong. So what Paul was actually proclaiming is how wonderful or how marvelous is the mystery of godliness that that God was manifest in the flesh that's great he was justified in the spirit that's wonderful he was seen of angels that's awesome uh, he was preaching to the Gentiles and thank you Jesus uh, believed on in the world and woo, he was received uh, up in the glory Praise God. But the great that accompanied godliness is the fact that he did it to save others. See, Philippians 2, 5 through 11 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. to the glory of God oh, the Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, if Jesus saved himself, he could not have saved others. If Jesus had saved himself, he could not have saved you. Amen. And he could not have saved me. Amen. I'm so thankful he saved others. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful today that I'm another. <laughs> Amen. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, people will question things in the Word of God. Say, could He have come down from the cross? Or could He have saved Himself? Or could He have called angelic hosts to fight for Him? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. However, He chose. Amen. Uh -huh. right. He chose not to save Himself. Right. He chose to save others. See, he didn't have to do it. Amen. All have sinned, come short of his glory. Every one of us. 
We're not worthy. But he chose. He chose one day to reach into every one of our lives. Brother Harper. He chose. And although, and I don't know where God found you. And I don't know what you were doing. I don't know what sin you might have, But He chose. He chose to save you. You see, He humbled Himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But let me tell you something. Jesus had it all under control. The death was horrible. The crucifixion was, was beyond what I can imagine. But he had it all under control. You see, he looked at his disciples after going through the temple. And they were like, oh, look at all this stuff. And all it took them all these years to build all this. And it's a beautiful. And I'm sure it was. It wasn't Solomon's temple, but Herod was was known for his architecture and his. I'm sure the place was a beautiful place that they were looking at with the gold and the the jewels and all that. And they come walking through there, and they said, "Look at all this kind of stuff." And Jesus looks at his disciples. And he says, "Destroy this temple." He wasn't talking about that temple. He was talking about this temple. He said, "Destroy the temple in three days, and I." We'll rise it up. Oh. He said, you can go ahead and crucify this flesh, but in three days, I will. He didn't say, well, you know, God's going to rise it up, or the, the, the third person in a mystical trinity is going to rise it up. He said, destroy the temple, and in three days, I will rise yes. it up. Amen. He had it all under control. His resurrection from the grave confirmed his mission to save others. It signed it, sealed it, and delivered the deal. Thank you, Jesus. His mission was and is today still to save others. Yes, it is. He did it then. He's doing it today. Yes. And if the Lord tarries, he'll do it again tomorrow. Right. I'm so glad God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. 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 So in conclusion, I'm going to close here shortly so if the musician will come. But in conclusion, I'd just like to say, He saved others. But because He saved others, I know He can save you. I'm here to tell you that if He saved Paul, the Pharisee of Pharisees, the persecutor of the church, he can save you. If he saved Peter who denied Jesus three times in one night, he can save you. If he saved doubting Thomas, I have no doubt he can save you also. And if he saved me, the least of my brothers, as unworthy and as undeserving as I am, He can save you. Yes. See, I've, I've heard all the excuses. Oh, pastor, you, you don't know my situation. That, that's true. But do you really think you're the only one that's ever been in a situation? But He saved others. Oh, Pastor, you, you just don't know what I've done. True. I don't know what you've done. But he saved others. Amen. And he can save you. Amen. One reason why I'm so confident is because I know he saved me. Right. You see, I'm not a first, I'm not a second, third, fourth generation Pentecostal. I'm a first generation. Amen. I didn't come into church till I was already in the military station out here at Fort Bragg. God didn't have to reach into my life. With all the things I had done before, God found me. He didn't have to do it.
but he did. So I know that if he saved me, he can save others. That's why I've just come here today to let you know you're not gone too far. You're not not, not to, you haven't done too much that God cannot forgive you because he saved others and all you really have to do is start following him make up your mind if you're, if you're going to be that good God to me then I'll follow you all the days of my life we call it repentance and then you can be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. This is a cleansing process that God has ordained to wash away your sins. And then you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And this is putting Christ on. Amen. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. All the old stuff has passed away. Amen. Behold, all things become new. And I'm here to tell you today that you are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses of people that were others. Which tells me Jesus still saves others. But today is your turn. Can we all stand? You know, maybe you've been listening to me and wondering, is this really how it works? Is it really that simple, Brother Paul? Yes. All it takes is a trip to the altar. Right where they are, say, God, I'm tired. Hey, man, this, this is what it took for me. I was tired. I searched and I searched and I searched and I just couldn't find something real. You see, people with tattoos and piercings and all that, they don't bother me. You know why? Because that just tells me they're hungry for God. They're hungry for something. They're reaching out to things that are temporary. And so they get a tattoo and say, well, now my friends will like me because I got a tattoo. And, and that don't do them any good. So they go get another one. And that doesn't do them any good. So they go get it up some piercings. And then the, but before you know it, they, they look all kinds of mess. But it only tells me that they're searching for something. Right. That's right. That something you're searching for is Jesus Christ. Amen. The rock of your salvation. Right the author and the finisher of your faith. So these altars are open. If you just want to come and say, God, here I am. I'm, I'm here today. I, I know how it is. Sometimes I, I just go to, when I go to prayer, I don't have all these fancy words to say. I don't have, I'm, not, I'm not like some of these. I don't know how they come up with the words they do. Usually when I pray, I could just sit before God and say, God, it's me. It's me, and I just want you to know that I'm here. And I believe if that's all you can pray, God knows right where you are today. And He wants to reach you because He saves others. Can we worship Him today? Can to lift up His voice? Lord, we thank You today. We thank you, Lord God, for the salvation that you have provided for your people. We want you, Lord God, to minister to each life that is here today. For you are a great God. You're a great God today. Thank you, Lord God, for reaching down and touching my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being my Savior, for being my Redeemer, for being my, my God and my Savior, for my rock, Lord God, my salvation. You are, Lord God, everything I ever needed. You are, Lord God, the hope of the world today. Ah, yes. Will you save others today? Will you reach in someone's life today? Will you minister to a need today? Oh, there's none like you, Lord. 
Lord Jesus, receive our praise and honor and glory today. Oh! 